one of the things I was thinking about on the Muni ride over here was, I think, given different people's socioeconomic status, they're taught how to appreciate art in different ways. Meaning, Absolutely. people on like lower socioeconomic uh, standing, they might have the opportunity to learn how to appreciate a movie, right? Mm -hmm. But they may not understand maybe the function of a museum or sort of mm -hmm. like the background or what really is going on when you go to an exhibit. It's crazy hearing that like an exhibit is something that's worked on for five years because my sort of thinking was like, oh, I guess like a museum has a bunch of paintings and then a curator kind of comes in and it's like, oh, let's plan this for next quarter and next quarter. Sure. And it was sort of like a, something that wasn't given that amount of like effort and thought to. Um, if for, for, those, for those people in the audience who may not be familiar with sort of like the function of a museum, how would you describe or maybe if you could like offer us a framework of thinking, how should we think about a museum? How should we think about appreciating art in a museum? Maybe that's not the best way to word right. it, but how should we think about like, okay, I live in the Bay Area. SF MoMA is here. Right. What is an exhibit? What would be the best way for me to uh, fit sort of SF MoMA into like my art consumption right. Um, right. diet, so to speak? Right. Um, that is such a fabulous question. That is, and it's one that I think about a lot. Um, I think that um, I think that one of the things we are lacking in here is um, in the United States, in particular, is that we don't introduce kids to art. Um, as a place, like the way we introduce kids to a library, like, yeah, this is your library and you can just come here and like, this is a place for you. And this is the stuff, you know, these are the books and, and you, but you can go in any section you want. It's a public space. I mean, museums are supposed to be public spaces. They are, we are stewards of a collection. We hold the collection and care for the collection on behalf of the public. That's why museums get tax breaks. That's why we are a nonprofit organization because we are we are doing a public service, and so. Um, so are it, the paintings like assets of the public? It, sort of think about that. They that oh, that's a great question. I I don't I don't. Mm, I would have to ask legal team what that what exactly the relationship is. But museums are, they are stewards of a collection, on behalf of the public, and I'm not sure if I can explain it any better than that. Um, but I think that we treat museums like a place that's like, I mean, for one thing, it's expensive. So it's not, um, it's not as cheap as going to, although movies are pretty expensive now too, but you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. It's still more expensive than a movie. Um, and um, I think that we don't introduce people to it soon enough. And I think that there's also a big divide where people think that there's, they are supposed to know something before they come in here. And I think it's, 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 there's, there's a, there's sort of an idea. And I think that both museum professionals and the public feed into this in their own way that like, oh, but if you don't know what that painting is about, like, it's not a, like, you know, you look at a beautiful landscape. You can just look at a beautiful landscape and love it because you think it's a beautiful landscape. That's fine. You can look at some, something that's totally off the hook and, and go, I don't know what that is. It's the uncertainty again. People feel like they come in here and they're supposed to be certain about everything. You go to the, you know, a zoo is a type of museum. Mm. People go to a zoo, they're like, I know what a gorilla is. I can go and look at a gorilla and I know exactly what I'm supposed to be thinking about a gorilla. And maybe I'll learn something new about a gorilla. But people come to museums, and I, and I think that museums do this too, that we, we have this sort of, you know, we've got these white walls and these little, little tags on the wall that say like one or two things about the artist. Um, a lot of times the writing is very difficult if you're not like steeped in that language. Um, it's hard because they have to be short. And so um, it's hard to be concise about a big, you know, a larger idea and things like that. Mm -hmm. And so I feel like people like, to me, it's it's about people just knowing that, like, no, this is actually a place for you, too. Like, just don't touch it, the art, okay, because we're not supposed to touch the art because that's bad for it. And I can tell you why it's bad for it, too. But, like, like you know, in France, every preschool, well, first of all, they have, you know, national, nationally paid preschool. But preschools all go to museums all day long. Every you know, There's constantly just a flow of, like, three- and four-year-olds parading through museums there's there's the idea that this is a place this is it's a place where families go on the weekend and it's just something you do and so um i think there's like there's not a normalization of it and i think that there are hindrances i think that the 
historically museums were for a certain group of people. And I think that's just been really hard to dismantle because the whole, the whole system got built up like around that, like all of the jobs and the way we lay them out and the hours that they're open and all of those things were mapped out with an old idea in mind. And we've just sort of carried that on. It's like how we've finally discovered that um, lecturing at somebody isn't the best way to learn something. Mm-hmm. But we really haven't, we still haven't actually changed education though. It's like we know better, but we haven't really changed how we do it. Um, I think that's also a really amazing place for artists to step in and show us what that could look like. Um, and so, yeah, I think these are, these should be public spaces. So many things I want to touch on in your answer. Yeah. I had on the director of the Latinx Student Center uh-huh. on the, the podcast a couple weeks ago. At State? Yeah. Yeah, awesome. Um, have you met him? No, but I love it. I love just, I love the whole student center there and everything yeah. that they do. So, yeah. Yeah, it was really cool um, hearing his experience. He grew up, uh, I think, in Hunter's Point in San Francisco, but, mm-hmm. um, you know, grew up from in low income background. Uh, high school was uh, pretty challenging for him, but he went to UC Davis and he was talking to me about, his struggle sort of like fitting in or feeling mm-hmm. as if though, um, I think the best ex- way I could explain it is he should have shared this experience of like, oh, when I went to the quad at UC Davis, it was like for the first time I could just sort of like leave my laptop in my backpack and like not fear it being taken, right? Right. And that was sort of like a shock experience for him. And one of the things I think about, you know, I feel very fortunate. Uh, my parents made it a point, me growing up, to, to make sure to uh make the emphasis on like travel and new experiences really really clear to me and my sister so nice. you know every single summer whether it was just a road trip or it was a trip to like europe or southern america it was like saving up to go travel was of the utmost importance to them right yeah and i remember you know i went to high school in uh, central richmond and so many of my friends had never just been to like a museum or been yeah. to like sites that people pay tons of money to come to san francisco from all over the world to like see um And I think your point about how a lot of this stuff needs to sort of be conditioned to kids and maybe kids from uh, more affluent school districts get more um, trips to museums. So that implicit in that um, sort of like experience or reality is that those kids, it's communicated to them that this is a place for you to come Mm -hmm. the same way, you know, going to a library or another public place. But for those kids who don't have, you know, those types of field trips to those places, implicit in that is, you know, you're sort of communicating to those kids that this isn't a place maybe for you to be, or maybe, you know, it is a place for you to go, but it isn't something that you could just um, sort of like enjoy. You're never really taught how you're supposed to enjoy it. Um, And one of the things that came up a lot when I had conversations with my friends who had never been to museums was, yeah, but like, you know, why don't, if I want to see a painting, why don't I just like look at a picture of it? And it's like, no, man, like, think about it. Like, why do you like going to a basketball game or a football game? It's like, you can watch it on TV, right. but there's something to be said about the experience of like being in there and what ideas that might inspire, what co- conversations you might have with people that you go to those places. Same thing with, you know, concerts mm-hmm. um, or even movies, you know, it's like, if a movie, you know, you could watch it on your laptop, you could go to a movie theater and watch it. You could go to maybe like the premiere, right? But like all those different like levels of like experience, there's so much insight to be drawn from those types of experiences. But I never really saw that communicated with, um, yeah. you know, my peers who weren't as fortunate to have parents that like made it, you know, a point to communicate that with Made it a priority, them. sure. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it, um, yeah, and it's interesting. Like I, you know, when we, when we first opened, when we were reopening in 2016 after the expansion, um, one of the guards, we were, you know, talking to the guards about, um, you know, watching people, watching bags, making sure people don't touch things. And um, one of the guards asked, well, what if they buy it? Then can they then can they touch it, though? I mean, they got to They got to touch it to walk it to like carry it out. Right. And she didn't understand that these paintings weren't for sale. She didn't understand that these were just for looking at. Mm-hmm. And. And like my heart just broke. I was like we have failed people. If we have people, uh, grown adults who don't know that this is not a a retail space, we have done something, like we have really missed something here. Like we are not doing our jobs. And Mm -hmm. like, you know, and I think about it a lot too, because like I live, I live in the Bayview. It's, you know, right off of Third Street. Third Street comes right, our address is on Third Street. I'm like, what? is happening between where I live and here 
like it's just two totally different words. Why, why is why are those people that are right at the other end of the T line not coming here? Like what what is the block? And I think it is about I think it's primarily about how we condition people and their expectations about what they're entitled to or not. Um, and then also just like you know when people say, well, I could just look at a painting and book. I'm like, it's different. I'm just, I'm not going to make you any promises about what you're going to experience, but I guarantee you it's going to be different to stand in front of a painting than looking at one in a book, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. Um, but yeah, I've, I, I don't know. I mean, there's a lot of, there's a lot to it. And, you know, we're getting into bigger issues of just like social disparity and, you know, um, you know, the, the, the inequality that happens between, schools and between what's being offered to students in schools and things like that um that i don't know that any one museum can solve but uh but if you want to have a public in the future that's going to support your museum and come and visit you you have to you know you you have to start cultivating them somewhere yeah. um because if you i mean and this is extreme and it might sound a little harsh but like if you're only going to rely if if we're going to keep if we're going to keep stratify, stratifying our our you know our classes, and you're going to and only the one percent is going to come to museums, that's not going to be enough people to come to a museum. It's going to be a really small. If only the kids of the of this little tiny fraction of society is learning that this is a place for them, the chances that we are going to have enough adults when that generation grows up to to you know, patronize a museum and make this all worthwhile. Um, it's pretty slim. Yeah. Yeah.